Hello and welcome to the session Intelligent Recording of Large Amounts of Data with a V-Measure Lock. My name is Alexander Sund and I'm going to present you uh, our latest tool for logging application V-Measure Lock. You might directly ask the question why there is even a need for a new logging tool or a logging application. Well, to get to this point, let me quickly summarize your general demands to a logging system in your vehicle. Obviously, you want your system to handle all kinds of different signal sources, ranging from different automotive networks to, uh, to ECUs, also including analog devices or cameras or um, GPS devices. And you want your system or your logging system to record all these different signal sources synchronized so that you can determine the cause and effect in your overall system. A logging system should be capable to operate autonomously so that no human interaction is needed during the test drive, ensuring the safety of your driver because he's not disturbed um, by doing some interaction with a laptop or a computer while driving, and also ensuring a process reliability. So every measurement is done in the exact same way. Modern um, logging application, but also demand for um, high performance recording of the data. If you think of um, testing an electrical drive, you would have to measure the voltage and the currents to your electrical motor, which is typically a three-phase motor. So you have three times the voltage and three th times the current that you would have to measure. The voltage is typically modulated uh, as a PWM signal at about 20 kilohertz. With an oversampling of at least 10 or even more, you could say uh, one megahertz um, sampling would be sufficient for all six channels. But already these, these few signals, uh, just six signals, result in a um, data rate to hard disk of about 22 megabytes per second. In a 10 hour shift, this is about 800 gigabyte that your logging system has to be capable to record. Well, most of the time you're not interested in this white noise and high resolution measurement of white noise um, during a measurement. You're more interested in a situation where something happens. So your modern logging system should give you the possibility to effectively reduce the data and allow it just to capture the essence of your measurement. And to do that, um, you would have to do some online calculation, meaning calculation um, while doing your test drive. For instance, uh, calculating the effective power in your e-drive system. And only if your power exceeds a certain threshold or um, the derivative of your power um, evolving um, is, is kind of strange, then you want um, uh, your, your data to be recorded at these high sampling rates. We call this complex trigger condition, as a condition may be very complex. And you also want to see what happened before this condition was fulfilled. So sometime before the trigger was executed, you should also be able to record at this high data rates. On a PC, we, uh, Vector already has um, software that provides such a feature set, namely vMeasure Expert. So the smart logger vMeasure Log now is our attempt um, to take our full functioning PC-based software and transfer it to a dedicated logging hardware and um, have you operate your measurement project autonomously from the back of your trunk on this uh, logging hardware. So how do you do that? One way would be, for instance, you could have already a measurement project um, lying around somewhere in your, uh, in your department. Um, someone um, used a computer with a vMeasure expert, connected some devices to the computer, um, set up a measurement, and was testing, for instance, at this desk, um, what the whole system should do. Now take this project and deploy it on a dedicated uh, logger hardware, reconnect all the devices to the logger hardware, and the recording will be performed on this um, hardware. So you can now take away the, um, the computer and um, everything will be done autonomously from uh, the vector logging hardware. So from the measure lock here. Obviously such a logging device would not have um, a, a monitor system allowing you to, to look into the measurement uh, or fiddle with the parameters there. But we thought it would be important for you to have means to see whether the um, 
the measurement actually um, works is operating. So we provided um, you with a mobile UI, which is a web-based application allowing with any um, browser to tune into your measurement. You could see this, uh, the status of your logging system, like measurement is running, um, we have some disk, uh, free disk space, and also to, to monitor um, selected or individual um, signal values while measuring. And if you later on connect um, the, um, the PC again to your logging system, you can download the measurement data, do some reconfiguration of the attached uh, devices or the logging system itself. This feature set allows for two different modes of operation. The one would be um, the interactive mode with a PC connected to the hardware. In this mode, you can set up um, a measurement task directly on the hardware. You could set up the hardware um, as you like or the devices connected to your logging hardware. You could define triggers um, or recorders, set how many hours there should be recorded. And then there's the second mode. We call the standalone mode, where the logger operates um, without interaction from any um, driver or uh, engineer. In this mode, your test driver could monitor the measurement via the mobile UI, but cannot manipulate the measurement, ensuring that you record all the time the same data while measuring. Vector provides for different hardware platforms with the entry leveling uh, for the smart logger with the entry level being the VN8911. This hardware is um, designed to record with up to 15 megabytes per second to an SD card. External devices can be synchronized via the vector hardware time synchronization mechanism. The device itself comes um, with two ethernet uh, interfaces and two USB interfaces and optional, you could also include uh, Flexray, CAN, CANFD, or LIN, or IO uh, interfaces. The next larger um, logging platform would be the VP6400 series. This logging platform is designed to record with data rates up to 500 megabytes per second. Um, external devices can be synchronized either via um, vector hardware time synchronization or IEEE 1588 or IEEE uh, 802.1 AS, so PTP um, synchronization mechanisms. You could have inter-exchangeable uh, storage cartridges with up to four terabyte of capacity with the system. The platform itself comes um, with two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports and two one gigabit Ethernet port and three USB interfaces. Optionally, you could include uh, further CAN and LIN channels to the setup. And as a top of the line um, platform, uh, we have uh, the VP7400 series. The uh, system is designed to uh, record with data rates up to one gigabytes per second, allowing external devices to be synchronized via vector hardware time synchronization mechanisms and again, uh, and again via PTP uh, mechanisms. You could have this uh, um, platform with interchangeable storage base up to 16 terabytes capacity. The system itself um, is equipped with uh, six one gigabit Ethernet ports and two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. Additionally, you could uh, include further interfaces like CAN, Flexray, with these PCI Express um, slots for two additional PCI Express cards. In this table, I just summarized um, uh, the, the differences or maybe the fields of application um, and characteristics of the application um, for the three different setups. The VN8911 is well suited for thermal management or HVAC component tests, where you have uh, analog signals um, measured with uh, sampling rates up to 100 kilohertz. The whole application or the field of application demands for um, moderate storage capacities. The VP6400, on the other hand, um, is already well suited to measure vehicle dynamics, EV testing, and so on, with uh, um, analog measurement signals sampled with up to one megahertz. And while recording, you can already do some um, calculation through the e-mobility analyzer or long and long test endurance measurements. 
the VP7400 now is best suited if you have the demand for many interfaces or very demanding calculations. So if the VP6400 does not fulfill your demands, there's always something bigger. With this, um, I want to fi uh, finalize now um, my presentation for vMeasure Lock and switch to a live demonstration of the tool. Because as I believe, it's very nice to talk about uh, software, but I think it's even nicer to show you the performance and the usability of the software in, um, in this video. So here we are now in our software vMeasure Expert, the configuration tool to vMeasure Lock. Every project that you create with vMeasure Expert locally, you can use as a logging um, project simply by deploying it to a vector logging hardware. Here, I do have a project of my co our colleague, um, Boris Ruoff, who was um, showing this very uh, project in his session, um, Easy E-Mobility Analysis with vMeasure Expert. The difference in his, uh, to his project is that I included two more slides. The first one, just to quickly introduce um, our signal source, which is a demo e-motor test bench, um, where we measure the voltage in all three phases and the currents with these LEM sensors on all three phases with CSM devices. All signals are sampled with one megahertz. So quite a lot of data has to be recorded uh, each second. With this demo now, I want to show you how to configure a trigger to only record data when something of interest happens in your measurement. And this something of interest in our example will be that the calculated power um, of this A motor becomes negative. So we do some recuperation, we recharge um, the battery. The second slide I included uh, is a visualization of the um, measured signal down here we have uh, the voltages on all three phases and the currents on all three phases. Up here, I do display the um, calculated power while we measure. So the first thing um, you, you notice is that we are currently working on our local machine. So we have to deploy this project now onto the logger. To do that, we switch to the uh, tab logger up here and click on select logger to start the logger selection dialog. Here, all loggers um, that I have, have been found in your uh, network are listed. I do only have one logger in my network currently, which I named Virtual Session. You're free to name it uh, as you like. The logger is um, of type VP7400. So just mark this, uh, the logger and click OK. So now um, I want to deploy the log project to the logger, but there is already a project running on the logger. So the software now asks me, do I want to use my local project and deploy it onto the logging hardware, or do I want to upload the project that is currently running on the, uh, on the logger to my local PC and have a peek into what is currently happening on the logger? In my case, as I said, I want to use my local project and deploy it to the, um, to the vector logging hardware. Okay. I will be asked to save locally uh, my project in just in case I did some um, some tapping there or some uh, some adjustment to the project to before. Now I'm in vMeasure Lock, as you can see by the red frame surrounding um, the configuration tool, and that's about the difference, uh, obvious, uh, well, just from uh, the, uh, the visualization that you are now um, configuring a logger. Also, you do see that, you are, that we are currently connected with a logger called Virtual Sessions with the IP address as depicted here. Now, the project that, uh, that, we, currently de uh, that we could just deploy to the logging hardware was developed on a local PC. Um, so all the devices, all the interfaces were connected to this local PC. Before this uh, demonstration, I did some read, uh, wiring and connected all these, uh, uh, the same interfaces now to the logging hardware. The first thing we have to check is whether this recabling functioned. So first, let, uh, let's see if all the interfaces were found correctly. I can do this by uh, clicking on channel mapping. And here I do see that I do have a VN5610 connected now to my logger. And that the Ethernet um, interfaces of this interface are assigned to um, vMeasure. This is just the way I would wanted it to have, be. 
Now in our setup, we do have CSM devices and I want to check whether um, they are configured correctly. So I go to measurement setup and do I go to configure. And here in the device configuration, all devices of my current project are listed. Here I see, uh, for instance, the voltage, uh, the vo device measuring the voltage, I named it voltage. So I click on edit to start CSM config. And now from my local PC, the logger, I connect to the uh, devices connected to the logger. And I could reconfigure them uh, just like this. This is very uh, convenient because when you think um, the logging application, the devices would normally be distributed throughout your vehicle. And you only have to add one cable to your logger to be able to reconfigure the devices in your setup. So let's return to vMeasure Lock, close the device configuration. And to see whether everything is functioning well, um, we start a measurement now. And what you do see is that some signals are recorded, some um, currents uh, some currents, and some voltages. And you also see that some calculation has been done and that we have a power of about 200 watts, maybe. Um, in, in our electrical drive. That's fine. I have to mention one thing about this graphical uh, view of the signals. Um, this is a reduced view of the actual recorded signal because as you can imagine, a VP7400 is designed to record data with a, a recording rate of up to one gigabyte per second. The ethernet connection between my local PC and the, the vector logging hardware is just a hundred megabit in this current state. Um, so way, uh, the bandwidth is uh, way too insufficient to support um, a live view of all recorded data in, uh, in the worst case. So what we do, we downsample um, uh, the recorded data to give you a preview of what we are currently recording. Um, keep this uh, in mind just as an alive signal of what uh, is currently happening of, uh, on your uh, logger. So let's stop the measurement. As a next uh, step, we would now want to um, define the trigger and tell the, um, the logger to only record once the trigger condition is fulfilled. To do so, we switch to the um, tab uh, Start and open the measurement configuration in the section recorder. Because setting a trigger in the vector world is a feature of the recorder settings. And vMeasure Expert supports, or vMeasure Lock supports, um, two different types of triggers. The one is called the status trigger, or it's as long as a status is fulfilled, a condition is fulfilled with a lag time afterwards, shown here. And the other one is an event trigger, where you can define um, an event and define a pre and a post trigger time and how many times it should be recorded with this event. Um, in our case, we want to use now the event trigger. And the sets are pretty fine for us. So half a second before uh, the trigger event, um, uh, the trigger condition is fulfilled, we already want to record the data. So this is kind of a ring buffer uh, in the background. And um, we want to record for a second after the trigger condition was fulfilled. The main part now is to define um, the event that starts the trigger or that fulfills the trigger vision, uh, condition. We can do this now by clicking on new new signal event and our signal um, that should start to uh, get the trigger going um, is uh, our calculated power so when we select a signal we want to select this power this is a part of the motor power analysis and it's the p here say okay and now we have to define what we want to see and we want to see um, changes from positive values to negative values so our threshold limit will be zero zero watts. And when we turn on a ne negative slope, um, we surpass it on a negative slope, um, then we want the trigger to be fired. Okay. That's it for defining the trigger. Every trigger event shall be recorded in a separate file, or you can also set it um, to be recorded in one file. I just leave it on a separate file. Now let's check which signals are, uh, will be recorded. Therefore, we go to the measurement signal list it's here. Here, all signals um, in the project are listed um, that will be recorded or that are calculated or part of your config uh, configuration. Back here, you can select which of these shall be um, recorded with, uh, with the recorder. Let's leave it with all. Close the dialog. Save the project. 
to align them uh, the project from uh, to keep get all the changes that we've done down um, to the logging hardware and then start the measurement and you can see down here um, that no uh, data is recorded typically you see here a recording rate so if I go and uh, get to the demonstrator now and change um, some settings for instance increase or decrease the torque or the speed of the um, of the turning of the, uh, the engine, then a trigger will be fired. You can see it here in a uh, right window. And please excuse um, that it's written in German language, but uh, the language uh, is from the operating system, which is in my case, a German operating system. And you can see that a trigger event was fired. So if I stop now, or yeah, if I stop now, I do expect to, to find two files on my uh, logger, the one from testing and the second one um, from the trigger event. So I go to logger, measurement data download, and I do find two files. The first one already being pretty large because it was the file um, where we were checking um, if all uh, connections were done properly. And just a few seconds already resulted in the data file of six gigabytes, almost six gigabytes. This one and a half seconds of the trigger, the second one, is already 126 megabytes. So it makes sense to keep um, the recording time at a reasonable size in order to uh, keep the, the, the data files feasible. Okay, a last thing I want to show you is uh, the mobile UI. And as I cannot uh, show you a mobile phone to connect to, I, I will use um, uh, the Internet Explorer of this computer um, to connect to the same mobile UI. So once I, if I start the measurement now, dum -dum -dum, and switch to uh, Internet Explorer, I just type in um, the IP address I'm connecting to the logger. And if I do a re uh, refresh, I do see that the measurement, um, I do see some values of my uh, current state. For instance, that the measurement is not running. I do uh, get the information of the right window, what is uh, um, what was uh, going on on the logger, and I could have a peek at the live values that are currently measured. To do that, I go to plus, and I can see all the uh, signals that are somewhere displayed in my, uh, in my setup. So let's say the power of the DC analysis, go back, and I do see the current values that are currently measured. You can imagine that this is uh, done as well um, on on your mobile phone uh, while you, you use it. And that's about what you can do with a, a mobile UI. You can stop a, a measurement if it's not running. You can see um, the, the how much disk space is still remaining and you can change the language, which doesn't have to be German. So with this, I want to thank you very much for your time. And if you have questions, please feel free to answer uh, to, uh, to raise them. I will try to answer them right away. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.